Hello, today's Bible study comes from Luke chapter 15, verses 8 through 10. A parable of the lost coin, and it reads as follows. Or suppose a woman has ten silver coins and loses one. Doesn't she light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me. I have found my lost coin in the same way. I tell you there is rejoicing in the presence of the angel of God over one sinner who repents. Now, just like the parable of the lost sheep that we read, this is another parable, and this one talks of loss and finding. And remember that in the other parable in regards to the lost sheep, there was no safety net for the lost sheep. It was not safe. It was lost, and it didn't become safe until it was found by the shepherd and it didn't get elevated until it was lifted up so the parable of the lost coin speaks to this woman losing a coin and the actions that are taken to what the one was looking for which was a coin if if the shepherd was interested in one in a Hundred, it makes sense that the woman would be interested in the one in ten, first of all. And the amount doesn't matter. It just truly tells you that one is missing. Something is not there. And now, if you were speaking to the woman and it was a monetary amount, well, this one out of ten would be a larger amount to her because she only has ten of them and she lost one. But the truth of the matter is something is missing. And it tells the actions that this woman will take to find her missing coin. Now, these things that the coin is a, is, was a type of a man and they are both from the earth. Um, you know, silver is a refined ore from the earth, and man was created from the dust, and we all know that from Genesis. Both are valuable. Silver coins have been used as monetary amounts throughout history. Okay? And man has been counted as cheap in the eyes of some of the men and their fellows. The, the thing here is that there's a value to this coin just as there's a value to a spirit. And it needs to be found and put with the right being. There's no value in following Satan. There's no value in going his way. And this makes you realize the value and the extremes that the Lord has put out there for us. The Lord sent Jesus. Jesus was sweeping. Did my camera go off? There we go. I ornament to this woman and made the loss all the more severely felt for her. She had one of ten. The loss belonged to God whether they know it or not. We all belong to the Lord. You know, it, you can act like you don't know him. You can claim you don't know him, but God blesses the righteous and the unrighteous. He showers down blessings. So, everybody belongs to him if you know him or you don't. I would suggest you get to know him. Now this piece of silver was lost, but it was still claimed. And the woman called this this lost coin, and she finds she calls her friends and neighbors, but when she speaks to this coin, she says, I have found my lost coin. I have found 
what was mine and it was my piece which was lost and when she lost it it didn't make her lose her right to it in other words Lord or you don't know the Lord it does not stop him from having a right to you you are his as I said whether you want to believe it or not and you don't become somebody else's coin when it slipped out of her hand it was still her coin if she went to pick it up or if she found it it was truly her coin when you are not with God don't think that you just automatically belong to Satan you are still God you may not do the Lord's way but you will confess you will bow before the Lord you are his now the woman in the story First, first thing she did was she brought light to find this coin. This light, Jesus, came, then swept and cleared the house. But the whole time she was looking for this coin. And she was doing it very carefully, checking for everything. And she kept looking until she found the coin. This is how the church, this is how... The people, we are the church. This is how we have to search for lost souls. And we got to get off our butts and go search for lost souls. We need to be led by the Holy Spirit. We need the light to shine out there. Our lights from the Lord to shine out there so the lost souls can see us, so we can see them. And the light that we put out there is God's word. And the Lord didn't say, walk up to that lost soul. And... No. It's go out there and love. And clean our place. Don't think because we walk with the Lord or we're walking with the Lord that we don't have a shortcoming, that we don't still need to repent, that we don't still need to recognize that God is number one in our servitude to him. So that when we go find our lost brothers and sisters, they're not afraid to come to the Lord because we're doing it in love, in service to the Lord. And then we have to search carefully for the lost. One of the first things to know is the worth of a single soul. And if the shepherd went to find the one sheep, for all. So why wouldn't we go look? Be happy as I said before, that's what makes these parents is we should be happy at all times when somebody comes to God. That is our job. Go make disciples. That was a command. Go make disciples. That's what we are to do. Oh my goodness. And don't scare them away. You, if you think about the the actual first parable from the the lost sheep, the the so-called Pharisees and the leaders of the law, they muttered. They they made it unattractive for a sinner to want to come to them. But if you notice, Jesus he sat down with them and gave them the word, and they gathered around tax collectors and sinners. So we have to do all our actions out of love, period. We can't attract them with anger. We can't attract them with hatred. We can't attract them with meanness. We can't attract them with non-compassion. We have to have the fruit of the Spirit. We have to do things that Christ would do. 
and he would show love at all times. And if you don't think God rejoices, read this passage again because this passage tells you tells you that he does rejoice. And remember, we are the bridegroom. So yeah, we need to be ready. We need to have as many as we can because the Lord rejoices. God rejoices over us. And he does it over one sinner that repents. Just repent. And if you notice, Jesus added this to both of the parables and to both the religious leaders and the sinners who heard him and knew that repentance is important to lost people. And we all are lost at some time, sooner or later. Even when we are with God, we have doubts. Even when we are with God, we waver. There is nobody in the Bible except Christ who did not waver, who did not have some form of doubt, who did not ask why. Know that repentance was the first thing that John the Baptist came out and spoke of. It was the first sermon that Jesus preached. We need to repent. Amen.